Of course, when you are one of the hottest teams in baseball, naturally, your last two series losses are going to be to two teams that haven't even won 20 games yet. Let's get into it on today's Lockdown Guardians. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Jeff. Before I get into that, I want to take a moment and say supplyhouse.com is a reliable way to get parts fast. Shop for your next plumbing, HVAC, or electrical job and get fast shipping from coast to coast at supplyhouse.com. I am Jeff Ellis, one of your hosts, former national writer at Scout 24-7 on MLB Draft and Prospects, as well as your fifth favorite writer at every Cleveland baseball blog over the last decade and occasional contributor to places like Prospect Live. I'm Justin Lau, one of your co-hosts for Lockdown Guardians, your daily Cleveland Guardians podcast. We're going to dive into all things the goings on of your Cleveland Guardians every day from the majors, the minors, and of course the draft. So if you need your fix of daily Cleveland Guardians discussion, you've come to the right place. And we are glad to have you wherever you are listening to us, watching us. We're free on all platforms. I've been covering the minor league system since 2007 for Cleveland, former editor of Guardians Baseball Insider, currently an owner of my own newsletter. Uh, and also cover the Guardian system for the News Herald, the Morning Journal in Cleveland, and also an occasional contributor at Prospects Lied. 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 Live. We both Shut said the name wrong. Game. It's okay. Yeah. It's a yeah, game that allows you to do that. I'm going to interrupt Shut Justin up. real quick. Oh, of course oh, you are. Go ahead. Uh, it's everyone's fa- second favorite thing uh, we do on the show. Uh, I kid. I just want to do a quick thing because apparently the most controversial thing I'm ever going to say is RBIs aren't valuable. Here's the thing about RBIs. Are they the worst stat? No, that is clearly pitcher win because a guy could throw a perfect game and somehow not get a win. RBIs tell a story. Is that possible? Perfect game? I think no hitter. I mean, it, I, uh, you could throw a perfect game and like, I mean, essentially you could get early or get hurt or if, yeah, he goes to the 10th. Um, didn't we have that happen somewhere where a guy had nine perfect and then like had to get pulled for the 10th. But uh, to get back to the original one, RBIs are fun. They're a triple crown stat. I remember as a kid, I would go and buy these packs of baseball cards and it would be ace was your best player all the way down to two. And it's, I remember being like, who is this Danny Tartable guy? He's the only guy I didn't really know in the deck. And being very excited because I was finally going to get a Cleveland ace because Albert Bell won the uh, RBI title that year. Uh, and then I opened it up and they made stolen bases. So I still got a Cleveland ace thanks to Kenny Lofton. But this is my way of saying it is one of those stats that is well ingrained. Um, it is something people really like. And if it's your stat, that's fine. The big thing with it is it's non-predictive. So when I say it's not a great stat, I'm basically saying it's not great for saying future success. Um, for instance, Henry Aaron, you know, one of the greatest hitters of all time, doesn't even want to have one of the top 100 RBI years because the guys in front of him didn't do their job. So it is a stat that is dependent on others. You know, it's kind of a 50-50 stat, just like runs. So I understand, yeah, the guys who, you know are your feared RBI types are often the guys who hit for power, but I just to clarify, so people don't get mad at me. It, it's a thing where it's an interesting stat, but in terms of like looking for future success or prediction, it's not great because it's, it's not a, an independent stat. It's dependent on others. It has dependent variables and that makes it um, one that uh, again, if you love it, great that I'm not going to yuck your yum. I'm glad you, you love it. Um, it's just not great for predicting. That's all. Yeah, it's a good storyteller of what happened previously. It tells you that a runner was on base and a hitter came up and did the job you wanted him to do, and that's good. You want to have good hitters do good things with runners in scoring position. Or, you know, solo home runs are are predictive, I guess, because you're driving yourself in. That's one thing, but that's not really what we're talking about here. Just to back you up a little bit, too, Barry Bonds, the year he broke the home run record with 73 homers, did not lead the league in RBI. He was sixth, actually. With 137, Sammy Sosa drove in 160. So, and that comes with yeah. Bonds getting walked with like the bases loaded a lot. His teams <laughs> figured better give up one run than four, right? So, yeah, it's you know, it's um, it, it's it, it shows a story, but it just always comes down to that. It it's yeah. non predictive. If you use stats for prediction, it's a junk stat, which is what I mostly use. I look at them trying to figure out like, okay, this guy's undervalued, this guy's overvalued. So for me, it is not a valuable stat. To others, it could be, and that's fine. So, yeah. um. Yeah, if you enjoyed, keep enjoying it. But yeah, that, that's that's my final line on it. I don't, I'm not here to get into an argument. I also want to do a quick another interruption. Just say, hey, thank you, everyone. Um, we had our most fantastic month ever in April. 
And Justin and I were kind of blown away when we got our numbers um, told today about how things went in April. So thank you to each and every one of our everydayers. Thank you for jumping in every day, being an everydayer. Even if you're four times a week or you're an honorary everydayer, but let's try to get it up to five. I'm kidding. Just thank you all for joining in and having some fun with us. Yeah. If you're listening any day of the week at all and you're contributing our numbers, whether it's one, four or five, whatever it is, we appreciate you listening. Wherever you're listening, we uh, have been enjoying this. We've been enjoying the season. Obviously, things have been going well, not necessarily on Wednesday's game, but, you know, that's going to happen. So we are Rise recording our competition, clearly. So it's, it's a good sign for the postseason. My yeah. Cat is you know what the fifth about October is? The White Sox and the um, Colorado Rockies will not be in the playoffs. Yeah, so. we don't have to fa- worry about them in the playoffs. So we're, we're all set. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's just baseball sometimes, honestly. Like, we're recording this in-game, and it's been a frustrating game. Logan Allen wasn't good. The offense has not come through. They've gotten some bad luck a little bit. So that's just going to happen. Yeah, David Fry has been unlucky in this one in particular. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's know, just so happened. funny that this team has been so hot to start the year. They've had a great month of May again. They had a great month of April. And their last two series losses are to the White Sox and the Rockies. Like you just can't predict baseball. You can't predict when you're going to play your best. Like that's, that's why it's just good to get in the playoffs because you might be playing Anything the best ball and the Yankees or, you know, whoever's in the, like that. The Diamondbacks are a great story. The Diamondbacks team, nobody thought they were going to, I mean, who no. thought they were going to knock the Dodgers out in the first round, let alone go to the world series. And they did. They just, it's, you know, they it's played a crazy the thing when the, right uh, time the Dodgers didn't when Freeman and Betts, you know, they happen to face them the one week, both Freeman and Bats decide to have the worst week of their life. Yeah. Like, uh, was it Lindor and Jose in 2017 against the Yankees just did not play well in that series. And yeah, so it just really depends on how you're doing when, once you get there and a little bit of random variance, but yeah, like you said, the Rockies and the White Sox won't be there. So hopefully they won't have any bad random variance there. Well, we'll continue to mix in some comments about the finale against the White against the White Sox, not the White Sox again, please. The Rockies is just as bad. Yeah, it's it's uh, the eighth throughout inning this now. podcast. It's the eighth inning. Beaks but is on. Just to, if anyone does want to line we, it up for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I, I really wouldn't recommend it. But one thing we wanted to get to on Wednesday show that we didn't was, you know, first of all, Stephen Kwan should be back sometime during this upcoming homestand. I think we were hoping it was going to be this weekend, but the. Clippers got rained out Wednesday night, so he didn't get a chance to play his second re- or his third rehab game. Fourth, little bit fourth. He's on three. And that means also Gavin Williams didn't get to pitch. So it might take an extra. Look at that bad luck. Look at that. Andre Semenez line drive right off the pitcher, and it goes to the third baseman, and he's out. We have to get to an Andre Semenez thing in the second segment when we talk about this game because that was such a terrible, terrible call or in the game. But yeah, one thing I'm, we didn't get I'm to. I'm still kind of steaming about that awful call. Yeah, we will, we will definitely get to that. But. Um, one of the things we didn't get to was, you know, Stephen Kwan is going to be back. And the first question is, before we answer the lineup question is, what is the move to bring Stephen Kwan back? Because, uh, before you put him in the lineup, someone's got to go off this roster for him. And the only guy I can really think of right now is Estevan Florio. And one, it's because, right. He's not playing. You're in left. You're in Colorado right now. Or you just finished three game series with the Rockies. That stadium is hard to play the outfield in. And for whatever we think about Estevan Florial when they acquired him as far as defense is concerned, I think we all would have we all would have considered him a better defensive outfield than David Fry. And that might still be true to some degree. And probably bigger raw power too for that park, too. Yes, yes, for sure. And he's barely played in this series. I know they had two lefties on the mound. Uh, in this series, well, that's not true. They only had one lefty because Austin Gomber got scratched. It was a bullpen game. But David Fry played in all three of these games in Colorado. And this is a, a ballpark you would have thought should. that. Yeah, Let's be honest, this as is, he but, should. But this is a ballpark I think you would have thought he would have DH'd and Florio would have played left field. But that hasn't been the case. I just, I think the, I think the Florio experiment ends with Quan coming back as there's nobody else in this roster to send down. There's no point in sending Gonzalo Rodriguez down. You're not going to send Arias down for him because no. he still plays utility and your backup. Some people brought up Bo so. Naylor, but they want three catchers. You're not going to not have three potential catchers. No. And you know, 
I think he's made some changes. I, I t- again, I tweeted out on t- on Wednesday night or Tuesday night that he made some changes to his, his stance and he did better in the LA series. He's had a better time in Colorado. I think he's coming around, but he's also been a plus defender behind the plate, which again yes. is just mind blowing. Um, didn't see that coming, but yeah. it, the bat's going to turn it around. And I just don't see, I don't see what Kim going to AAA really solves other than just trying to maybe correct some bad habits he might have gotten into, but you're not going to really correct those in AAA because the pitching gap is so big. So the only guy that makes any sense is Estevan Florio. And I don't know, I guess we can wind up saying this trade ends up being a wash for both teams because Morris has not helped the Yankees at all. And I guess it was a gamble for both teams. Yeah. Cause more Morris is essentially a reliever. Now a guy you and I both liked for multiple years. Um, didn't need him in this bullpen. And no, I don't know. You could have stretched him out to help you in the rotation, but Lord knows how long he would have stayed healthy for. So it might end up being a wash. I don't know. Let, let us know who you think it's going to be. I, I think we both agree. It's going to be Floreal for Quan over the weekend. And that's going to be that. Yes. No, we, uh, we got to talk lineups. We got to talk about what has us ticked off from this game. We got to talk about <laughs> some more promotions as well as some guys we feel like have kind of earned that chance to get promoted. Um, I don't think we we'll have time today. There's been a few releases and some guys who have moved on, which will hopefully uh, is setting up for the Friday draft, show. But yeah, yep. And we'll we'll get into some of that on Friday. But yeah, we got you know get ready for some names you need to know. Guys who are playing really well in the early going. We talked about last year's system had its struggles. This year's system has some guys who are showing early on. So good yeah, names. There's to been know. some there's been some good developments early on. I think there'll be some throughout the year. So. We'll get to some of those names here in the rest of today's Lockdown Guardians. A name you should know is definitely Supply House. Get supplies from the site that is made for skilled trades. Supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, electrical products online. They have an easy-to-use website that is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. So shop their complete inventory over 200,000 parts from over 400,000 top brands to get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? Get expert support and industry leading service from the friendliest folks in the business. Talk to a real person every time when you're ordering something, always prefer talking to a real person in the age of AI and automation pros and skill trades and competitive edges by joining supplyhouse.com's free trade master program. Every trade master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at supplyhouse.com slash TM and order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com. Guardians off on Thursday, but Friday they are back home against the Washington Nationals. And catch all the action on your Sirius XM app and that series and all the series by searching Guardians on the app. Is would supplyhouse.com be uh Jerry DePoto's favorite website? It's made for skilled traders. Right. I don't know. If you're a fan of <laughs> Seattle, you would argue that uh he is he is not a skilled trader with the <laughs> some of the trades the last possible. two years. Um that could you know, be, he does love trades, possible. but yeah, it's uh Hey, they're in you know, first I, place, aren't they? So they're four they, games before they are. In a terrible I'll just, division. you know, I'll, I'll I'll take my victory lap a year ago when I was like, you know what? I don't know if I like this lineup outside the top five. And the yeah. Mariners fans are passionate. They jumped in our comments, and uh, I was like, oh, we'll see. And hey, I'll just future! If anyone's there, uh, how did Colton Wong work out? Okay. Being the, God, he I'm got being released today. By, or, or he got released yeah. by somebody the other day. So, all right. Uh, speaking of guys for no who, reason. One time, Colton Long was a good leadoff hitter. He is not he anymore. Was. Stephen Kwan is. He was for like a minute, sure. So when Stephen Kwan comes back, I think everyone wants to have the debate of where he hits in the lineup. Tyler Freeman has done a fantastic job in the leadoff spot. He, look, I think it's been a, a great move because at, for the first couple of days they were goofing around with like Estevan Florial and somebody else. The Andre Semenes lead off a game, which you know whatever, but. They had somebody else leading off besides Florio. I think he somebody against else against uh, Lefty. Maybe it was David Fry, which honestly is not a bad choice. Um, as the leadoff hitter, though, Tyler Freeman, 8.8% walk rate, 
a 368 OBP. No, no real power to speak of, but 276 average. Only a 308 BABIP, so not super lucky. He's done a great job. I think the leadoff spot's been great for him because this is a guy who before never really showed a whole lot of patience at the plate. Yes. Uh, he was a very like swing, nice play in center field, him. by the way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's great. made a few of those. He's getting more and more comfortable. Man, Jimenez has had a rough, uh, <laughs> See, rough day. Yeah. So I hate the idea of taking. I really, I would really hate to see Freeman out of the leadoff spot and have his approach change again. So I think the easiest thing to do, I know it, I know it's not a conversation. I think Tyler Freeman would respond to it well because that's the kind of guy he is. But I think you put him ninth in the order. I honestly do. I think he is your second leadoff hitter. You're only going to lead off once a game, guaranteed. Yeah. Um, I know it's going to get him less at bats, but if you could, if Freeman keeps the same approach in the nine spot, and you know his exit velocities have been okay, he doesn't have the greatest launch angle, as we know, it's gotten better. But if he can keep that same approach in the nine spot, and you just kind of bump everybody up one, you know, I know it means more at bats. Maybe you put him eight instead of nine. I don't know. I'd rather have him behind Quan because if he keeps that approach in the nine spot. He's got speed. I think he's, you know, your second leadoff guy. And when the lineup turns over, if he's on base, you got Quan up, you got Jimenez up. I think it's an interesting way to go, putting him ninth. I wouldn't be opposed to hitting him second either and just moving Jimenez down in the order. But I think hitting him ninth has some value too. No, to me, he's he's first or he's ninth. Like, I want to go one way or the other. Um, I, I'm not, a, you know, I brought this up on yesterday's show as a tease. I kind of like the idea of having him first, um, kind of keeping him with what's been successful because then it just it helps push down balance in your lineup because then you can put Quan too, who's been their best hitter and you want your best hitter in the two hole. Um, Jose three, Naylor four, Fry five. And you can all the way. So you can Jimenez have like, down no matter what. Yeah. Saying. So then Jimenez, at like, you know, seven he's going to be six. like six or seven. Him and Manzardo maybe flip flop and we can figure out. And then, you know, it, it allows you to set up um, you know, Naylor at, at eight and, and Rokio at nine, and then you can have like a Brennan Rodriguez platoon at uh, what's at, at maybe that's what's at eight and seven is Bo. And if Bo starts to turn around, you know, he he goes up, Jimenez goes down, and I love Jimenez. But let's be honest, like he's got a yesterday when we looked a one and nine weighted runs created plus, that's probably what he is. He's closer to average, he's going to be an average to above average bat with stellar defense. And on a good lineup, he probably is hitting a little bit lower in the lineup. Now against lefties, I would push him up because uh, he is, again, continuing. I checked the data just to say, hey, is that continuing? It's very weird. No, he he is continuing to do reverse platoon splits. But um, to me, I, I think Freeman is one or nine. You, you're going to put him in, as you put it, very well, that second leadoff spot, or you put him in the first leadoff spot. Those are the only two spots I would consider him in the lineup. I, for me, nobody else that's lead off besides Stephen Kwan. He is the guy that does the, the best there. He's your table setter. I think just the approach overall works so well. I, I don't, I I don't want to hit him anymore. I kind of so like having him at two because, like, if, if you can get someone else who gets on base, then Kwan is advancing runners constantly. That's the same as Freeman getting on base in more. front of him at nine, though. With yeah, less at bats. But it's, and you get Kwan, but, then you're getting Kwan for at bats a game no matter what, usually. But then you're also getting That's the why. situation again, you know, we can debate this. It's the fun of it. Like, but then you're also yeah. getting where it's like, then you have another person between Jose and Quan. This way I get Quan and Jose back to back into Naylor. Quan, Jose into Naylor gives me my three best hitters all in a row. Right. There's no, like when you put a Jimenez or anyone else in there, then you're giving them a break. Like I, I love Andres, but he is a break between Quan and Jose and Josh right now. When you put them all together, no break. Like I can see worlds yeah. where teams walk Quan. Like he's gonna get on base anyway. Well, maybe not because he's he's not much of a power hitter. But maybe they feel like they got a better chance of of Andres chasing or striking out in situations like that. So I just line them up again. But I'm not opposed. You know, either either approach. But I think, you know, like I said, he is he's one or he's nine. Nothing else makes sense. I don't know. I think there's some argument to be made for the second spot in the order. I mean, I new school would say no because you do want. I mean, I. Look, I've been saying for a couple of years now, Jose should second. I'd rather have Jose hitting second. Um, there was talk about them doing that this year, and then and they did it for like a couple of games. I mean, I'm, I'm all for Quan, Jose, Josh, Fry, and then uh, yeah, and then, uh, I, I wish they would still Fry consider being Jose second, being Andres against lefties and uh, Manzardo against righties. And I, I mean, I, I would love that. Yeah. 
I think the other question here too is is keeping David Fry's bat in the lineup too because he's played a ton of left field with Quan out. So you know, no matter who hits lead off, Quan is is playing left field. Freeman's in center, and you know you're trying to balance Rodriguez and Brennan in right field as a platoon. You know, I think you're going to have to work David Fry into right field at this at this rate because you're going to need to keep his bat in the lineup somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can DH him, but that also limits some of his flexibility when you DH him. So maybe you catch him and you DH Bo, um, and then or, or you catch catch Fry and you put Rodriguez in right. And you know, I think you know, one of the easy answers, at least against lefties, is that he plays first base and Manzardo sits for the time being, and then that's true. Um, and then against, against righties. righties then you figure out like sometimes he's going to play the outfield. Sometimes he's going to catch sometimes, or DH. you know, maybe he DHs and, and Josh yeah. or Kyle have a day off. So I think, I think it's that like, I was so tired this morning. If you saw it, you can go ahead and make fun of me. I sent out some terrible lineups where I like, no. I, I had extra outfielders and no shortstop. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I was tired. I need to sleep more, but uh, does yeah, like no. it's fly ball pitchers. So maybe, <laughs> It's David Fry again. He, no, he just got one off the end of the bat. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I still am in the camp of playing him five out of seven days a week at the very least. I still like the idea of having him on the yes. bench um, some games when you're facing a tough righty and you want to save him for a pinch hitting appearance against a, a team that has like a really good lefty in the bullpen. Um, so you can pick your spots and use him at, at his best. But oh, four or five days like... a week, he needs to start. He plays all seven days no matter what. Yeah, it's just he's your high leverage days hitter. He starts. Yeah, don't want to break he's him. Instead like of, your, he's like Nick, yeah. Nick Sandlin of hitters. Just make sure he gets out, like, but not out, but like on the bait. You know, don't don't hold him too long in reserve. Don't don't make that mistake. Yeah. Like, oh, my clothes are only pitches here. Like, let's make sure he gets out there. And very quickly, um, we're gonna, you know, when we come back in a second, we're gonna talk about this game. Rules be darned. Um, that Andres Jimenez situation at first base oh, was. Was was infuriating, yeah. and I know Fever Dog yeah. will tell us why we're wrong, but we're still going to talk about why that annoys us. And if it annoys you, make sure you're commenting below. <laughs> All right, stick around for some in-game commentary and some airing of grievances from what looks to be a loss to the Colorado Rockies in this series. But first, let's talk about our good friends over at FanDuel. Uh, before I get into the ad read, I want to talk about the lines. By the way, there are only six teams you can bet to win a hundred plus games this year. Cleveland is one of those six. Uh, I know Justin has always talked about how you can't bet them to only win 80 plus anymore. Now, I mean, you can bet them to win 90 plus, but it, and they're the second best odds. But uh, they are now amongst the teams you can bet to get a hundred plus wins. Uh, you can't bet league leaders outside of home runs, but uh, it would be nice. I'm kind of want to say Jose Ramirez at plus. Uh, 2,500 is interesting because if he doesn't have that three home runs taken away from him, he would be tied for the lead, right? So just just something to keep yeah. in mind. But uh, it's winner take all for NBA and NHL and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks to spend on spreads, money lines, player props, which we talked about, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot whether it's a slap or a uh, bank count, FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com to look at – keep doing that wrong. No game for the Guardians on Thursday, and maybe they need a day off to wash the ugliness of this game away. Uh, they'll be back home very early in the morning on Friday, and they will take on the Washington Nationals at home. Hey, it's City Connect night. Uh, if you can't watch, listen on your SiriusXM app. Just search Guardians. See, Kyle Manzaro didn't start tonight. Now he's coming in for a pinch hit appearance in the ninth. It's a very low leverage opportunity, but, you know, you're getting him in that bat against a tough righty. So, And this is two years in a row of uh, struggling with the, the Rockies. This is definitely Cleveland's kryptonite. Oh, well, last year, let's just forget about all the things and that happened last I, I, year. To two, two more things before we dive too deep. Uh, just two quick notes. I've had a few people ask, can Tyler Freeman move back to shortstop? He was never a very good shortstop. That's not, no. He's been very Why good in center move field. Him back anyway. He's been, and who right. are you going to put in the center? Miles Straw. I don't know. Um, I'm kidding. But Boy, um, more, he, more he's been a solid. He, you know, line. he's getting better every day in center field. Leave him alone there. I know shortstop yeah. has had its ups and downs. Leave him out there until um, 
until you decide if Travis Bazan is the center fielder of the future. Yeah. And um, <laughs> the, the sad thing is, again, I need to get more sleep because I forgot what my second point was. So let's move on. Andres Jimenez was not, and ended up being not consequential in the game at this point, but my God, what a horrible call that was. I mean, the, uh, he was like, blocking was clean, the plate. Yeah. The first baseman was blocking first base. And that's why Jimenez, I think was starting to shuffle a little bit as he was running and they said he stepped on the grass. But if you look at the replay, yes, the outside of his cleat hit like the skirt of the grass. It never went into the grass. I don't know what that umpire was looking at, but I, he must have been paying homage to Angel Hernandez because he was right in front of that play and he just he he missed it. He just stripped. Well, ball I get up. you know I think what they were because I listen. I, I I've been very honest. I grew up with Corgan. I listened to every one of these games. That's what this is. This is so I can still listen and hear the game um, because this is my childhood. So I'm listening. Oh, it's not great by Manzardo there though, but um, you know they were like, well, if it hits him, he's automatically out. So since it hit him he's out but at the same time like if there is catcher's interference this is first baseman's interference like he had no pathway to the plate how can that be fair and he was running on the white line are you not supposed to run on like you can see where he damaged the line and he's supposed to well, and he's supposed to technically be over a bit but like i don't know to me it's a terrible call but i don't know the argument was he touched the grass which he didn't you can say you no, can say he, he touched the skirt or the lip of the grass but that can't count you're not on the grass if you touch the lip of it so you can't i can't count um, just a stupid, stupid call. Ended up being inconsequential anyway, because Logan Allen was not good and the offense, you know, didn't come through against a terrible starting pitcher, which you know, that's frustrating. I mean, this is a this is a good baseball team that had a bad night, and when you face a pitcher like Ty Block, you want to go out and score a bunch of runs. They scored a bunch of runs on uh on Wednesday or Tuesday, they scored a bunch of runs Monday and they won and they lost that game too. And they just didn't score. I don't know. I think of it as bad sequencing or just a bad night. But, you know, obviously it's – I think you can say both, A, bad night for the offense, and B, frustrating that they had a bad night against the pitcher who is barely still in the league at yeah. this point. No, it's, I mean, they, the offense just didn't do enough. As much as we can get annoyed at this, that, and the other thing, uh, yeah. it's, you're, in Colorado, you're in Colorado facing a quad A pitcher. It's a horrible pitcher. Yeah. And they – they, they didn't get enough. They just did not do enough. No. That's, that's what it comes down to. I mean, they've got six hits against. Yeah. Eight base six runners hits, against eight base yeah. runners. Yeah. Do more. I mean, um, yeah, it's just, it's been terrible. Tyler Kinley hasn't been good all year. I mean, he's a reliever ERA, so I won't. I mean, the, won't the, the one positive that, is Josh Naylor, two hits again. Um, the only yes. guy I believe reached base twice in this one. Nice to see him coming around. I'll take that as a positive. David Fry reached base twice. No, he didn't. He didn't walk. No, Sorry, once. And then he had two. He, one at what his the one to center field would have been a home run. You said in twenty five out of thirty parks, and yep. the other one had an expected batting average of six seventy. So he hit the ball hard twice and just had bad luck. Should have had so. should have had three hits. So yeah, mm -hmm. maybe some bad sequence in there. Hey, the good news is the bullpen was fantastic. Eli Morgan. No, I know he gave up about three. Abila. Yeah, he. I mean, Elon Morgan gave three base runners, but nobody scored. Heron two came two in, did three great. Fine. Yeah, Heron came in, did a great job. Henches got one out, whatever. And Pedro Vila once again was fantastic. Pedro Vila He's doing his job. Really, yeah, I mean, you're gonna look at the ERA and you're gonna say, well, this is not a good pitcher. But some of that is also blown up by a couple of um, bad outings when he first got to Cleveland. He has been excellent in the long relief role, and um, hard to argue. Logan Allen is on the other hand is a different story. So look, it's not been a great year for him. He had, you know, we'll say three good starts in a row. He had six shutout innings against the White Sox in the win in that series where they they uh lost three or four. He threw six shutout innings against the uh twins, who actually has a good offense. And he gave three runs against the Angels in five and two thirds, which you know, isn't take. great, but you I mean, know, that's, that's who Logan six Allen is, is. That's a back end yeah. guy. Uh, three and, and almost sometimes back end college. guys sometimes back end guys have nights like this against Colorado um the, the alarming thing for Allen is this he has allowed four runs or more in one two three four five Seven, of his 11 starts five, That's what five, five of his 11 so almost half of his starts he's allowed more than four runs that can't continue um he's got to be a little more consistent than that when he you know, he just didn't find the plate at all. He didn't get any called strikes. And he, I mean, I'll throw up the plot if you're watching on YouTube. Um, but his 
he had he had no, no command of anything. I mean, I his he command was, was just not there today. Yeah, he didn't throw one changeup for a called strike. He didn't throw a sweeper for a called strike. Um, the only pitches he threw more, for called strikes were fastballs and cutters. That's when they weren't getting hit. More balls than strikes in this game, which is very unusual yeah. to see. And let's remember that you know he is a bet he is a number five starter, and sometimes that's going to happen. Um, he does have consistency issues. He is a guy who relies on command. So you're going to have nights like this. His command's got to be better. It has been better. Um, you know, he's just got to limit the damage when he has bad nights. That's that's what separates the good pitchers from the great pitchers. Is like like Tanner Bybee to me is is the guy who is on the, the precipice of this. Is he's able to have good nights when his stuff isn't his best. He's able to stay in there and compete. Logan Allen clearly doesn't have his best stuff in these games where he's giving up more than four runs. He's got to find a way to stay in there and compete. And he hasn't been able to do that. And that might be because he lacks big time stuff. Um, but this is who a fifth starter is. This will be interesting to see what happens. Um, they just, he, he, listen, he's got to figure it out because they don't have choices. They, they, no, no, they don't. Like, they you're don't. not, so he's, yeah. you're not sending him down with Gavin, unless he has no, even a then, string of because, start. yeah, no, because even then, it's like you got Curry and you don't know what's going to happen. So it's like he is he is here to figure it out. He's they here. believed in yeah. him. And it's like, you know, maybe it's yeah, one of those things of will be once once things heat up, some of that soft tossing stuff can sometimes be more. We didn't get to promotions. You were worried we didn't have enough to talk about. I always worry we're well, not gonna have enough to talk about. And well well, okay. So I have I have some hot takes on some guys I would like to see move up the system, and you'll have to yep. wait till tomorrow to get those. By the way, for a game where we're we sitting here, yeah, this this game's now seven to four in the ninth. Two runs added, mm-hmm. and Ty Freeman just walked, which we talked about is important for him. Runners on first and second. Tying run is coming to the plate. You gotta love this team, right? Like, this is why it's so fun this year. Like, in a nutshell, mm-hmm. it's you can't give up. There's no quit. Like, you cannot give up. You cannot quit because it, no matter Never what happens, bad. this is a, <laughs> this is fun, right? Like, it, yeah. for everyone who's like, uh, a year ago, five runs felt like a million, and yeah. this year, like, they're at least making this interesting. And they made it interesting on Monday as well. And that's part of what's really great about this team. Yeah, fun stuff ahead. All right, we'll talk about prospects and promotions tomorrow. We'll talk about the draft a little bit. And um, I'm, I'm actually asked Jeff some questions about uh, grading this team uh, as we head into summer. It's almost June 1st. So all, all A's. That to come. I'm Mr. Positivity. All A pluses. A plus, A plus, A plus. I want to see. What uh, I am known as Mr. Now. Jeff, Mr. Positivity Ellis. That's what I believe my name to all of our listeners is. King of the RBI, King of Positivity. Um, thank you all for joining us, reading and reviewing, <laughs> downloading daily. It helps. Uh, we appreciate and really enjoy all of you. Thank you again. The RBI King and himself, better than Barry Bonds. Thank you all. The game unfortunately ended. Go, go, Guardians, go.